Hey everyone, this is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today we're going to go over nursing care plans. In nursing school, you will be required to complete a lot of care plans and then whenever you become a nurse, you'll have to complete them as well. However, the care plans on the job and in nursing school are a little bit different. Care plans in nursing school, they usually take a long time to complete, they're really in depth and there's a lot of stuff you have to fill out. But on whenever you're on the job as a nurse, the care plans tend to be relatively short to complete because you see these patients coming in over and over and you have experience as a nurse so you know how to fill them out and they don't require as much research and filling out as your care plans do in nursing school. However, in nursing school, I think one of the reasons that we were required to do care plans is because it helps us start thinking as a nurse. Because whenever you're first starting out in nursing school, you don't understand how you would really, truly take care of a congestive heart failure patient unless you do a nursing care plan. Because the care plan makes you think from that nursing standpoint how to take care of that patient. So that's a benefit of them. But in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over how to complete a care plan. Um, this is the steps I use, I use six steps, which I'll be going over, and behind me is a scenario, and I'm going to work through it and show you how to do it. On our website, RegisterNurseRN.com, we have a whole list of care plans that you can use to help you in developing your care plans for nursing school, but we wanted to create this video so you'll know how to create them and give you some tips in doing so. So let's get started. Behind me, we have what a basic care plan would look at whenever your professor gives you the assignment. They typically give you a blank sheet of paper and there's columns. And the columns, you have assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluations. Um, some professors, they have interference as a column and they have rationales as a column. In this, we just have these columns. So the very first thing you do in your six steps is you read the scenario. Then step two, you're going to look at your assessment data, which is your subjective and objective data. Step three, you develop your nursing diagnosis. Step four, you develop your patient goals. This is the planning, what you're gonna do for this patient to help get them better and help um, them overcome this nursing diagnosis that you've came up with. Step five, these are nursing interventions. This is what you're gonna do in order to get the patient to meet their goals. They're very patient oriented and they're nurse specific. And then step six is evaluation. You're gonna evaluate how the patient is meeting those goals. And if not, you're gonna redo your, maybe your diagnosis because the patient's changed or you're gonna redo your nursing interventions. So that is how a nursing care plan is laid out. So let's get started. Step one, read your scenario. So let's read our scenario. We have a 25 year old patient admitted with extreme nausea and vomiting. The patient had chemotherapy treatment 24 hours ago. She is receiving chemo for stage four cervical cancer. The patient is laying on her side with her arms around her stomach. The patient says she's extremely nauseous. On assessment, her skin is cold and clammy. Her heart rate is 101, blood pressure 120 over 80, temperature 99.2 degrees Fahrenheit, oxygen saturation 98% on room air, and she has a history of an appendectomy and a C-section. So we re read our scenario. The scenario replaces how if you were in the hospital setting and you're getting a report to see what the patient has or you go in and interview the patient during an assessment, that replaces it. So there's your scenario. Now step two, we're going to look at our assessment part, what we found in our scenario. Main things we're looking for is what's called subjective data and objective data. Subjective data is what the patient says it is, their feelings, their concerns. It's subjective, you can't prove it. It's just based on what someone says. So we're gonna look at our scenario and see what was subjective. What was subjective was that patient says that she's feeling extremely nauseous. I like to put lines under each part, like the subjective or objective data. Sometimes that helps, so that's a little tip you could do. Um, so there's one line under that, and um, that's all that's in this scenario. Typically, subjective data, there's not a lot of it. Um, sometimes, there, sometimes there is, sometimes there's not, but usually there's more objective data. So let's look at our objective data. Objective data is something you can prove, something that's measurable, like, and you see it, like your assessment, lab values, vital signs, things like that. So let's look and what in this scenario, what is objective data? And we have two lines under that. Um, 
Objective data, first part, patient is lying on her side with her arms around her stomach. That to you, walking in that room, you see that, that proves to you that, hey, something's going on with that patient's stomach. She's clutching it, she's having pain. So that's subjective data. Her skin is cold and clammy. You felt that on assessment. You felt it, you know it's there. So that's under objective. And vital signs, vital signs are always objective data because they're measurable. And her heart rate's 101, a little fast, a little tachycardic. Um, blood pressure is 120 over 80, that's normal. Temperature, 99.2 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a little bit warm. Probably she's dehydrated from where she's been vomiting, so her heart rate's up a little bit, and she has a little bit of a low-grade fever, nothing too major. And oxygen saturation is normal at 98%. Okay, so you have your assessment data. Now what do you do? You need to analyze your assessment data and see what is going on, what is the specific problem for this patient that we can develop our nursing diagnosis around. And we see that, hey, nausea, she's having nausea. That's what's wrong with her. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna get your nursing diagnosis book. Um, a nursing diagnosis book is usually recommended by your university. They're very crucial whenever you're first starting out in care plans and developing your nursing diagnosis, which is this part right here. The nursing diagnosis is three parts, hence why this is in different colors. You have the diagnosis, you have the related to effects of chemotherapy, that's the related to part, and then you have the as evidenced by part. And the first two parts will come from your nursing diagnosis book. So for today, I am using um, a nursing diagnosis book by Carpenito. It's just a basic little book. Um, this one um, is a little bit older, it's an older edition. And what we need to do before we can even use nausea, we have to make sure that it meets NANDA guidelines for being able to use that diagnosis and make sure it's even a diagnosis. So always get comfortable with the index of your nursing diagnosis book because it can really help you in developing these care plans. This book right here, um, say that you had a patient that came in with cancer and they have been having issues or they came in with congestive heart failure, you can go to the specific part in this book, it's the appendix, and find those um, problems and it will actually give you diagnoses you can use. Super helpful. So I really recommend you get you a good nursing diagnosis book. Okay, so in this, I wanna use nausea. So let me look up in the book and find nausea. Okay, I found nausea. First, we need to make sure that it fits the definition for nausea. If, she, if it doesn't, I can't use it. So let me read the definition to you. Nausea, the state in which an individual experiences an unpleasant wave-like sensation in the abdomen of the, thro of the throat, epigastrum, and throughout the abdomen that may or may not lead, lead to vomiting. This is what's going on with the patient. So she definitely meets that. But there's one more thing I have to make sure. In the nursing diagnosis book, it will have what's called defining characteristics. And there's major and minor. And there has to be at least one or more major characteristics that this patient's presenting with in order to use this diagnosis. So let's see what it says. Um, it says usually precedes vomiting. Patients had that. It's accompanied by pallor, cold and clammy skin. Patient has that, um, may have tachycardia, she has that, and reports nausea. So there we go, we can use this diagnosis. Now, if she wasn't having these things, we couldn't use this diagnosis. You would have to find something else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put nausea because we've met that. Now we have to look at the related to part. The related to part also comes from your nursing diagnosis book. You copy it verbatim what the book says with what criteria they meet. So in your, in your book, it'll say related factors. Related factors is the related to part of why, why is this patient having nausea? What's it related to? What's causing it? And in the book, we the reason that this patient's having nausea is related to effects of chemotherapy, and the book says that verbatim. But let's look at another scenario. Say that this patient had came in with a um, GI bug and was throwing up. A related to part, according to the book, instead of being related to chemotherapy effects, would be related to gastrointestinal irritation secondary to, to acute gastroenteritis. So that, the related to part comes from the book, and the diagnosis part comes from the book. Now let's move on to our third part, which is the as evidenced by. The as evidenced by is the evidence of what your patient is presenting with of why you're using this diagnosis. So as evidenced by patient reporting nausea and chemotherapy. 
because over in her subjective and objective data, and this is where the patient was saying she was nauseous and having, and she's been having chemotherapy treatment. So that's your as evidence by. So let's read the whole nursing diagnosis and show you what it would look like. Nausea related to effects of chemotherapy as evidenced by patient reporting nausea and chemotherapy treatment. So that's our nursing diagnosis. Now once you develop that, we're going to move on to our next step, the planning part. The planning part is patient goals. One a couple things you need to know about planning. Planning needs to be specific to that patient, okay? Meaning that what's going on with this patient is nausea. So our goals need to do have goals to correct that nausea. Second, they must be measurable. Whenever you read them, your professor or another nurse must be able to look at it and say, okay, how are we gonna know we met this goal? What's, how do we know? So let's get started. Okay, first goal I wanted to have for this patient. Whenever you're developing your patient goals and you're first starting out, I really recommend that you use your nursing medical surgical book or a pathophysiology book or another type of nursing book to help you with these interventions. Because whenever you're first starting out, like I've said, you might not know some interventions to do for this patient because it's new to you. And looking through these books and reading the text will help you start thinking like a nurse and developing these. And this is what you're developing all by yourself and it's gonna help meet your diagnosis. So what I developed for mine, I developed the patient will report decreased nausea within six hours. We want her nausea to be gone within six hours. So that's a goal. It's specific to the patient and it's measurable within six hours. Next, I put the patient will tolerate clear liquids within 12 hours without nausea and vomiting. It's patient specific. It says in 12 hours, she'll be able to have clear liquids for nausea without having nausea and vomiting. That to your professor or another nurse would say, hey, we can do this goal that means that the patient's nausea is getting better because typically when a patient can start consuming something without the nausea and vomiting it means that we've got somewhere and the nausea is subsiding the next goal the patient will verbalize five foods and liquids to avoid that makes the nausea worse typically with patients who are getting chemotherapy they have um, they become really sensitive to foods that normally wouldn't affect a patient who's not getting chemotherapy so they start having food intolerances with that and the only reason you would know that as a nursing student or unless you've been through that is when you read through your text and start understanding how chemotherapy affects patients. So that's a really good goal for chemotherapy patients who have been having nausea and vomiting because it may be being caused by um, a stimuli like a smell or a certain food. So that's one goal. Now, since we're done with that, we are going to develop our interventions. Our interventions are called nursing interventions. This is what we're gonna do as the nurse so the patient can meet their goals. Okay, so the first intervention we're gonna do, again, there's two things you need to know about your interventions. They have to be specific to the nurse, meaning the nurse is gonna do them, and they have to be measurable to prove and to show how you're gonna do this so whenever another oncoming shift comes on, they can follow it exactly how it was written. So, first one is the nurse will administer Zofran 4 milligrams IV every six hours per MD order as needed for nausea and vomiting. This right here will help our goal that we set for the patient to decrease their nausea, Zofran. Next goal, the nurse will assess patient's nausea every two to three hours. This is very important because you have to know how the patient is having nausea and you have to write it down to see how many times you need to do it so you can prove that you're assessing the patient's nausea. So that's another important goal. If you can never think of a nursing intervention, always try to do a nursing intervention that is assessing for something so many hours. That's always a good one. You're always safe with that. Next, the nurse will provide the patient with clear liquids when nausea is under control within six hours. That intervention is proving that you are going to be offering the patient clear liquids every every hour or every two to three hours and giving them and assessing how it's affecting them. So that shows that you are meeting that goal. Next, the nurse will educate the patient on five foods and liquids to avoid for nausea. This will go back to your last patient goal that you set. And this will show that as the nurse, you're sitting with the patient, you're trying to educate them on five foods or liquids that is aggravating their 
nausea and making it worse. And then you're gonna have the patient verbalize back five foods and liquids that's affecting them so you can so that you know that the patient understands how to avoid those foods. Now so that's your nursing interventions. Now you may be wondering how how many nursing interventions are you supposed to have? How many patient goals are you supposed to have? It really depends on what's going on with your patient and what your professor wants. Um, I would typically do four or three or however many you want just to know that you've met your case of meeting your diagnosis. If you don't know, always ask your professor. They'll be able to help you, but typically that's pretty safe. Now our last thing is evaluation. The evaluation typically on a care plan you'll have met or unmet and you'll circle if the patient has met that goal because that's what we're talking about or has unmet it. Now patients met it, that's great. That, you're saying that the patient um, will report that their nausea will be decreased within six hours, so that's great. If they don't meet it, what needs to be done is either you're going to need to change your nursing diagnosis because maybe something else is going on with the patient or you need to change your goal for them or you need to add some more interventions so they can meet that goal. That's all evaluation is doing. If, on the job, you'll notice that a care plan will have, if you're a lot of people, if they have paper chart, you'll know that the care plan will have marks out or things will be changed because it's always changing because patients are always having new problems, especially when they're in the hospital and they've been hospitalized for a long time. The care plan just helps us stay on track and making sure that we're targeting that patient's specific needs of what they need. Now also, I want to mention this because this might be on your nursing care plan, is you might have to have a rationales column. The rationale column is really for you to start thinking as a nurse and making your professor understand that you know, you, you understand why you're doing these interventions. Because typically that's where the rationales go. You'll say why you're doing this. So for instance, the nurse will administer Zofran four milligrams every six hours as needed for nausea and vomiting. And then you would have to put a rationale beside of it. And the rationale would, you would talk about um, Zofran and how it works on the body in decreasing nausea. It attaches to those receptors in the gut and, or in the brain and it decreases nausea. And that would come from your drug book in that you're explaining to your teacher, you know how Zofran works and you know how it treats nausea. So typically there will be a rationales column of why you have to do that. So that is how you do a basic nursing care plan. So on our website, registerednursrn.com, we have some care plans for educational use that you can use and help you in developing your care plan. It can give you some ideas on some nursing goals you can use or um, I mean nursing interventions or patient goals you can use. So um, I hope this helped help, help clarify some things. And thank you so much for watching. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel for some more teaching videos. And thank you so much and have a great day.